In my last video, I made this airspeed indicator, and in this video, we're going to wire it up to an Arduino and connect it to MobiFlight. The X27 is a pretty quiet, pretty smooth, automotive stepper motor. It's kind of nice because it doesn't require a 5 volt and a ground pin like other stepper motors do. Uh, it just uses four pins that go directly to the Arduino. If you'd prefer the popular BYJ48 stepper motor, Covenator actually remixed my design and made it able to accept these 28 BYJ motors. You can watch my video using these in the description below. Watch the first half of that and then come back for the second half of this video. Thank you so much, Covenator, for the, your awesome work. For the wiring, we have two methods. The first one, you connect all of the wires as you should, um, and the, the pinout of the stepper motor is as follows. It goes one, two, three, four. So you just take one to one, the first pin, in this case, pin two, two to the second pin, in this case, three, three, to the third pin, in this case four, and four to the fourth pin, in this case five. First available pin on the Arduino is pin two, that's why they're all off by one. Um, although, But you can take this order and put it anywhere on the Arduino. Like if I wanted to start at eight, or if I wanted to go crazy and start at like 46. With this method, you fix it in the configuration. So instead of going two, three, four, five, it goes two, four, three, five. So it swaps. The other method you can do is to put pin one, the first available pin, but pin two and three swap. So instead put three to the second available pin, and two to the third available pin. The fourth goes to the fourth available pin. For this one, the configuration is completely normal. It goes two, three, four, five, but the wiring goes one, three, two, four. Just remember, either swap configuration or swap wiring, but don't swap both. We have it all hooked up and ready to go. Let's hop into MobiFlight. If it prompts you to flash firmware, flash the firmware and get started. Under MobiFlight modules, click MobiFlight Mega and add your device. So we're going to add a stepper motor. Now, it auto fills the pins, which is usually good, but in this case, it's not. Let's go from pins. Remember, it was one, three, two, four, or two, four, three, five. We're going to have to swap the three and the four pin right here. Um, but there's no four available because it's taken by this pin right here. So we'll have to basically use have this pin use a random pin, 24, I don't know, and then four becomes available. And now three isn't being used, so three will become available. So now it goes Two, four, three, five. Two, four, three, five. Let's name this air speed stepper. Upload it. And go on. Let's create a new row and have this air speed. I spelled that right, right? <laughs> Let's activate it so it does something. Go to edit and immediately go to the display tab. I'm going to choose an output device, our MobiFlight Arduino, and it's a stepper motor. And select your airspeed stepper. The sim to stepper value says whatever unit the simulator travels, the stepper motor travels X units. And then a test value is just how much it moves whenever you press test. So I like to set sim to something that makes sense. For me, 100 will make sense if it's going from 0% to 100%. That makes logical sense. But the other thing I like to do is to say 360, um, and that's the amount of degrees around the servo. You could also set it to, say, the maximum airspeed value being read by the instrument. So let's say 200. That could be a good metric. However you define this, it doesn't matter as long as you tweak the variables in a way that makes sense. 
to you. I liked 360 because there's a 360 degrees of rotation, and I'll keep it there. For the stepper motor, to make a full rotation, I did some experimenting and found a number 729. Something that's kind of fun, kind of quirky, is that X27 stepper motors um, to the second power have 729 as a number. I'm not sure if this is scientific or not, but uh, if nothing else, it's a cool coincidence to remember it. If there's a real number, leave it in the comments. <laughs> this is just the best m number I could find. This sim to stepper says that whenever the simulator goes 360 degrees, the stepper will go 729 steps of a full rotation. Let's set our test value to 180. Now, if we press test, it moved, I would say, 180 degrees. Whee! If you think you have it all right and it's jittering like crazy, uh, switch the middle two pins right here and see if that fixes the problem. People have said on the internet that the X27 stepper has about 315 degrees of travel. I think this is about the most I've seen. So let's try it and see if it's right. Yep. That appears to be our maximum travel. There's, there's just about 45 degrees that it's not displaying anything, which I think for our purposes is okay. This working stepper motor doesn't mean anything unless we apply it to the airspeed indicator. Let's plug in our airspeed indicator, and I used consistent coloring so I can just replace the wires right here. I know that yellow is one, light green is two, blue is three, and the dark green is four. This is the moment of truth. I don't actually know if this is going to work or not. Ah, it works like a charm. That is so satisfying. This is the first ever time I've seen my airspeed indicator move. I'm so proud of my little baby airspeed indicator for working. For this, we're going to use a sim connect so for Flight Sim 2020. I did my servo. <sighs> my goodness, you need to stop doing that. I'm gonna give your old man a heart attack. And of course, there is a mandatory update. What we want to use is airspeed. Um, we can just search it right here, which is a lot easier than going into the FSU IPC list or using this drop down that may or may not have it. Uh, so I like to search it, airspeed, and you just have all of these. Already I see the one I want, airspeed indicated, right here. And it's even the Microsoft generic one, so we know that it'll work for all airplanes, or most of them. And under compare, I'm actually going to use an interpolation setting. So this is some, it sounds like a crazy word that you'll never know, but it's actually just basically making a table. So whenever the input, the simulator, gives us a zero, we're going to spit out a value of zero to 360. So when it's at zero, it's actually at zero. Wow. Uh, that's probably the only point that'll work well. When it's at 200 knots, it hits its maximum position of 315. And when it's at 180, I think there'll be roughly uh, 100 10 right here because 180 degrees we'll set it right at 110 so we'll add one more point right here 110 um will give a position of 180. so let's see how close this is i'm honestly not sure how close it'll be but let's let's find out save it run it and it's go time Whoa! You'll see already uh, the airspeed indicator is accurate. The airspeed indicator is not evenly spaced. A lot of flap indicators aren't evenly spaced either. That's why this interpolation table is just so helpful. So our input value, our speed, uh, lets us show a certain speed, and our output value lets us show what rotation degree that's at. We need to know the rotation degree so let's go and find that right now. We'll stop Moby Flight, just so nothing crazy happens, 
And then we're just going to actually change this test value right here to numbers that will give us the correct number. So we want something at 40 um, and we can just guess it'll probably be like 45 degrees. So set the test value to 45 degrees, press test, and that was actually too much. So let's try it like 30, I'm not good at estimating angles. And 30 is actually perfect. So that's a point. We know that at 30 degrees, it reads a value of 40. So let's add this into the simulator. Add a new row. If the simulator inputs 40 knots, it should output 30 degrees. Um, and if we try another one at say 50, um, so let's try to get to 50 knots. Oh yeah, I think 50 was one of the cool points where everything lines up. Yeah, 50, whenever the simulator is told to move 50 knots, it should move to 50 degrees. And now let's move it to 60. I think it's going to be something like 65 degrees for 60 knots. Oh, 70 degrees probably. Ooh, it looks like 73 or something crazy like that. I think 73 degrees. Um, to show 60 knots. So add a new row. To achieve 60 knots, 73 degrees. You can obviously write these down and then you won't have to switch back and forth between compare and display. But I didn't think about that until now. So to achieve 70 knots, you need 95 degrees of, of rotation. So we can just add that in. 70 and 90. Now let's just test the lower arc of the airspeed indicator. I actually ended up kind of getting fed up and I actually went under control options, uh, keyboard, typed up pause, miscellaneous and set pause on to P and set pause off to O. For some reason you can't assign them to the same button like just like press P and it freezes and press P again and it unfreezes for whatever reason. I overrode strobes, uh, which is usually on O and probably something else that's usually on P, uh, but I like this a lot better. Now if I press P, it freezes. If I press O, it unfreezes, which is really nice for this application. Let's uh, just test it out. Pretend we're taking off. And it looks like it's pretty close. You might need a little bit of adjusting, I think. Uh, some of them got out of alignment as the zero kind of shifted for some reason. Um, so we can change these out as much as we need to using this compare tab right here. And of course, whenever you're adjusting these, make sure to press stop, otherwise crazy things will happen. It looks like instead of a value of 30, a value of like 32 might work better. It's just the angle I'm sitting at doesn't lend itself well. And of course, make sure to set your zero correctly. So 33 here, that should make it just a little bit. Yeah, there we go, that's perfect. I then went ahead and just added a few more points. I added one for every number on the airspeed indicator, and that gave me a pretty good sample size. I'm actually going to leave a little Google Drive or a website post or some crazy thing with all of my values. So you can just say, okay, set the sim to stepper value 360 uh, to uh, 729 or whatever. And then you can just copy and paste or type and paste my values and it should work. I'll also try to leave a .mcc file and you can merge that into your master home cockpit file. To my knowledge, I got everything completed from zero all the way to 200. That's 20 points. If you want more accuracy, you can add more points. If you want less accuracy, you can just do the main ones. Um, but that's perfect. Uh, I found it was good enough for me because uh, between 40 and 60, um, usually about in the middle gets 45. Um, and and this really depends on where in the airspeed indicator you're looking because this space from 60 to 80 right here is a lot bigger than the space from 120 to 200 right here. I don't know why, but it seems to be that way. 
now let's use slew mode and uh, see how high we can get and then how fast we can get. The Cessna 172 is not a very powerful aircraft, so uh, kind of needs slew mode. We're at the edge of space, and now we can just con see how accurately uh, we can fly down to the center of the Earth and how fast we can go, too. I've never blacked out in a Cessna 172. This will be a new accomplishment. Okay, it hit its stop, and it actually hit the stop in the Cessna 172 as well, um, although you can barely see it. Let's pull up, <laughs> see what happens. The air over, uh, moving over our wings is actually quite violent. <laughs> okay, here we go. So you can now see that the airspeed indicator is um, acting normal again. We are at 50,000 feet. I believe before we were at 150,000 feet. Of course, our propeller is just windmilling because there's not enough air for the uh, normally aspirated f engine to actually function, but we're just kind of chilling at 80 knots. I think we'll go down, try to do a loop, and see how accurate our airspeed is. No other reason. Let's see if we can't do a loop. I, don't, I still don't think we can. Oh. I looped a 172. That is an accomplishment in itself. We try to make it in for this <laughs> this runway right here. Thank you so much to all the supporters, including Altimeter Motives, Bromine, Chris Patey, David Housley, Covenator, Mr. Klotz, Propwash Sim, Similar, and Stuart. Supporters of this channel help cover prototyping expenses so I can make designs that work elegantly. And this is an upcoming video's prototype. Guess what it is in the comments below. If you're interested in this Cessna 172 project, I have an entire playlist right here where you can build your own simulator that looks like this. The plans are all free on GitHub, so check the link down below for those. If you haven't already, also watch the airspeed video right here and uh, have an absolutely fantabulous rest of your week and have a good one.